टीचिंग लर्निंग सेशन ऑफ प्रिंसिपल्स ऑफ माइक्रो इकोनॉमिक्स पार्ट टू बी ई सी सी वन थर्टी टू टूडे इज सेशन वन ऑफ दिस बी ई सी सी वन थर्टी टू प्रिंसिपल्स ऑफ माइक्रो इकोनॉमिक्स पार्ट टू इन टूडेज क्लास आई विल डिस्कस विद यू मार्केट स्ट्रक्चर मार्केट स्ट्रक्चर has different forms of market as you know that market is a place where buyers and sellers meet together and sell or purchase goods and services there are different forms of market under the topic of market structure here these are the four types of market number 1 is theory of perfect competition second is theory of monopoly firm next is theory of imperfect competition which is also known as monopolistic competition market and last market structure is oligopoly there are different types of market but you will study in your syllabus only these four types of market otherwise market structure is very vast and under this topic there are so many other types of markets also exist like duopoly market bilateral market monopsony market but under your syllabus there are four types of market which is perfect competition monopoly imperfect competition or monopolistic competition and oligopoly today i will be discussing here theory of perfect competition perfect competition is a market where all the buyers and sellers sell homogeneous product perfect competition is that market in which buyers and sellers exist in large numbers all the sellers sell same or homogeneous product and all the sellers produces same product it means that there is no difference in the product like color size design packing each and everything is same which is selling by all the sellers of the country perfect competition occurs when none of the individual market participants like buyer and sellers can influence the price of the product in this market here so many large or very large number of buyers and sellers exist so that no one individual buyer and no one individual seller can influence the market price and market supply of the product perfect competition market is price taker not maker there are so many assumptions or so many properties of perfect competition market these properties are number 1 is in this market there are large number of buyers and sellers it means under this market buyers and sellers may be of large number and all the sellers produces same or homogeneous product which is called identical products it means there is no difference of any type of under this product like color size design packing products are same or homogeneous next is no collusion between sellers each one act independently it means sellers they have collusion collusion means cooperation here all the sellers work independently there is no collusion between sellers it means all sellers are not dependent on each other all sellers are independently work all sellers produces homogeneous product or same product but act independently they are not dependent on each other third feature is homogeneous 
or identical product. Under the perfect competition market, all these sellers sell same or identical products. Homogeneous product feature is very important because in other markets, other forms of market product may be homogeneous, may be differentiated, but perfect competition market is that market in which all these sellers sell homogeneous product. Next point is freedom of entry and exit to the market. Under this market, sellers are free to enter in the market and sellers are free to exit from the market. Obviously, all firms enter in the market when they are earning abnormal profit. And when they are bearing losses, then firms will exit from the market. It means firms have fully freedom of entry and exit. Either they may enter in the market or they may exit from the market. And it is clearly understandable that firms always want to gain maximum profit. In the case of abnormal profit or supernormal profit, perfect competitive firms enter into the market and when they bear losses, they will exit from the market. Next requirement of perfect competition market is perfect information. When you know that uh, price of the product under perfect competition market is same and product is also homogeneous or identical. It means buyers and sellers have perfect information about the product and the price of the product. All buyers know about what price is prevailing in the market. And buyers also know about this, that what type of product is selling by the seller. And seller also know about what buyer is intent to buy and at what price. So perfect information is available under this perfect competitive market. Next is no government intervention. Perfect competitive market, we assume that under this market, there is no interference of the government. It means market forces like demand and supply manage this market price. So there is no need to interference of the government under this market. Next assumption of this market is production factors are mobile. As you know that factors of production are four. One is land, second is labor, third is capital, fourth is entrepreneur. Land is the main producing factor of producing goods and services. All the factors are necessary, but land, labor, capital, entrepreneur, these are called primary factors of production. Without using these factors, no one nation can produce any type of goods and services. Under the market of perfect competition, here this is the assumption that production factors are mobile. It means factors of production can be shift from one place to another place, from one country to another country. But this assumption is not perfectly exist at present. You know that land is a fixed factor. You can't shift land from one place to another. And land is God gifted, which you can't increase or decrease the size of the land. Sometimes labor is also not mobile. If you say that labor uh, went to the Andaman Nicobar for work, Maybe labor will not willing to go there. So labor is also not perfectly mobile. Under capital, capital is uh, a fixed assets like buildings, machines, equipments. Sometimes these fixed assets can't be shiftable 
from one place to another place. So all the factors of productions are not perfectly mobile, but here we assume that perfect competitive market factors of productions are mobile. But this assumption is not realistic. At present, factors of productions can't be shiftable from one place to another place and from one country to another country. And as you know that in short run, some factors remain constant, others are variable. You can shift only the number of units of variable factor in short run, all factors you can't shift. All factors you can shift only in long run. When you have too much time, then you can shift your factors. But land can't be shiftable from one place to another place. Factors are not perfectly mobile. But these are the assumptions of this market. So we have to study about these assumptions under this market. So perfect competition market is, in brief, we can say that perfect competition market is that market where very large number of buyers and sellers exist and all sellers produces homogeneous product or identical product or same product. There is no difference between the product of color, size, design, packing, price, etc. And all the sellers have fully freedom to enter in the market and exit from the market at any time. And all sellers and buyers have perfect knowledge or perfect information regarding the product and price. And there is no government intervention or government interference in this market exist. And factors of productions, which is assumed to be perfectly mobile, but not a real assumption. Under this market, uh, one more assumption is that uh, transportation cost is absent under this market because in this perfect competition market, price remains always uniform or same. When the product is same, then price will also remain same. So there exists that transportation costs are absent. This assumption is also unrealistic but when we discuss about perfect competition, then you must have to write all these assumptions which assumed by the economics while discussing or while explaining this form of market. This is the first form of market. Next is characteristics of perfect competition. As I have discussed with you that there are many buyers and sellers in the market in this perfect competition. And many buyers means no one individual buyer and no one individual seller can influence the price of the commodity and supply of the commodity. It means when there are so many numbers of buyers and sellers exist in the market, then individual buyer or individual seller can't influence the market price and market product. Second thing is the goods offered by the various sellers are largely the same. Same means homogeneous or identical. Third is firms can freely enter or exit from the market. When firms earn abnormal profit, then they will enter into the market and when firm bear losses, then they will exit from the market. Next is the individual firm produces a small proportion of total market output. Under this market, individual seller or individual firm produces only a small proportion of total market output. So individual seller can't influence the market supply of the commodity. The firms can't have any influence over the price it charges because perfect competition firm is price taker not maker. This is the very important feature of perfect competition market that price is always determined by the market forces of 
demand and supply curve and price is fixed by the industry and firm is only take over that price which is fixed by the industry so perfect competitive firm is price taker or perfect competitive market accept that price which is fixed by or determined by the industry as you know that industry is the group of firms and firm is a part of industry there is a difference between firm and industry firm is a part of industry like reliance is a industry and reliance mobile is a part of reliance industry reliance fresh is the part of reliance industry reliance petrochemical is the part of reliance industry these are firms and industry is the broader concept and firm is a narrow concept firm is a part of industry and industry is the group of firms so industry always determine the price under perfect competition market and firm take over that price which is determined by the industry next feature is the individual firm in a perfectly competitive market is a price taker price taker not maker next is it takes that price which is determined by the market as the price that it will receive for its output it means perfect competitive firm can't change the price of the product when the product is homogeneous then price will also be uniform or same or identical so these are the features of or characteristics of perfect competition market next is price determination under perfect competition market this concept is very important sometimes examiner can ask that how price is determined under perfect competition market so you must have to draw this diagram one diagram here you are watching that here two diagrams parallel on simultaneously you have to draw one is industries demand and supply curve and second is firms demand curve as you know that demand curve is always downward sloping curve which shows inverse relationship between price and quantity demanded and supply curve is always upward sloping curve which shows positive or direct relationship between price and quantity supplied where demand curve and supply curve intersect each other equilibrium point is determined and at that equilibrium point equilibrium price will be op and equilibrium quantity will be oq this is industry's demand and supply curve and industry has determined op price of the product and this op price is take over by firms so price will remain same under the individual firms individual firms demand curve you can say that individual firm or perfect competition firm is price taker and firm always take over that price which is determined by the market forces or demand and supply curve intersection under the perfect competition market demand curve or ar mr curve will be always horizontal line parallel to the x axis in this market price will remain same whatever unit of output you are selling but price will remain always constant or same so firms demand curve slope is always horizontal line or parallel to the x axis line this is the price determination condition or price determination diagram under the perfect competition market it's very important because all the diagrams under perfect competition market which is based on this 
horizontal line it is derived from this curve market demand and market supply curve intersection we can derive firms demand curve with the help of this next is tr ar and mr under perfect competition tr is total revenue ar is average revenue and mr concept is marginal revenue what type of shape of total revenue average revenue and marginal revenue under perfect competition market so under perfect competition market firm always sell homogeneous product or same product that's why price remains always same or constant so ar what is tr tr is total revenue first of all you must have to know about what is revenue revenue is the total earning or total money income which is received by the seller after selling its output if a seller sell its product at any price like if 1 kg sugar price is 40 rupees and seller is selling 2 kg of sugar then how much amount producer will charge producer will receive 80 rupees this 80 rupees is called total revenue total revenue is always calculated by multiplying price and quantity price into quantity is equals to tr total revenue is the total money income which is received by the seller after selling its output so we can calculate tr by multiplying price and quantity average revenue is always equals to price average revenue is called per unit revenue of output and per unit revenue of output can be calculated by dividing tr to output if we divide total revenue by units of output or quantity of output then we can get ar ar is equals to tr upon q and tr is equals to p into q so p into q upon q q q cancel then ar will be equals to price so we can say that average revenue is always equals to price and marginal revenue shows net addition or net change in total revenue marginal revenue is the difference of total revenue when we sell one more additional unit of output then total revenue will change and the net change will which occur in total revenue it is called marginal revenue the diagram of total revenue is always 45 degree line and start from the origin because under perfect competition market price is same or uniform or already given so if price increases by same proportion then if price remains constant or same then total revenue will increase proportionately or equal ratio so tr curve will always be a positively sloped line and 45 degree line which is start from the origin and upward sloping line and the ar mr curve will be a horizontal line or parallel to the x axis line under perfect competition market ar is always equals to price mr and ar is known as demand curve of perfect competition market ar curve for example the demand curve facing a firm in the market is perfectly elastic so you must have to remember that the firm's demand curve and a perfect competition market is always horizontal line or perfectly elastic the shape of this curve 
will remain always same because this firm is always price taker not maker next is short run equilibrium under perfect competition market there are two approaches of equilibrium conditions the two approaches of equilibrium conditions are number 1 is total revenue approach and total cost approach this approach is known as the total approach or we can say that this is the approach of tr tc approach <coughs> what is tr tr is total revenue total revenue shows total income of the seller or total revenue shows the total income or money income received by the seller after selling its output and what is total cost total cost you have studied in theory of cost chapter total cost is the summation of total fixed cost and total variable cost and total cost means the total expenditure or total money expenses which incurred in the production of goods and services so if we minus total revenue and total cost if we take difference from to total cost to total revenue then we can get profit and profit can be indicate or denoted by pi total revenue is equals to tr and tr can be calculated by rise into quantity and total cost is the summation of total fixed cost and total variable cost and profit can be calculated by deducting total cost from total revenue tr minus tc is equals to profit and each and every producer want to gain maximum profit as you know that producers always aiming to get maximum profit and consumer always interested to gain maximum satisfaction through minimum spending and producer always want to gain maximum profit at minimum cost where tr and tc both are equal that point will be called break even point break even point is that point where total revenue and total cost both are equal here firm is not earning any profit and not bearing any loss when there is no profit no loss that situation is called break even point but firm if firm wants to gain maximum profit then firm will calculate the difference between tr and tc and where the vertical distance or difference between tr and tc will be maximum firm will earn maximum profit so maximum profit can be show with the help of gap between tr and tc where the gap between tr and tc will be largest then firm will earn maximum profit and when the gap is minimum then firm profit will be less and when tr and tc both are equal that point is called break even point no profit or no loss point and the second approach of short run equilibrium is mr is equals to mc mr is marginal revenue and mc is marginal cost mr can be calculated by taking difference of tr and mc can be calculated by taking difference of total cost if producer sell one more additional unit of any quantity of output then total revenue will change the net change is called marginal revenue and mr can be calculated by using the formula of trn minus trn minus 1 or delta tr upon delta q and mc can be calculated by using the formula of delta tc upon delta q or tc n minus tc n minus 
Here, this is the second condition of equilibrium. Mc should be equals to Mr or Mc should be equals to Mc. And Mc always cuts Mr from below, not from above. These are the two conditions which always exist in each and every market. Either market may be perfect competitive or monopoly or monopolistic competition but condition will remain always same in each and every market. So these are the two approaches. One is TRTC approach and second approach is MRMC approach. Under the TRTC approach, the difference between TR and TC should be maximum, then firm will earn maximum profit. And as according to the second condition, where MC should be equals to MR, and MC must cut MR from below. These two conditions will be clear when I will show you diagrams and table. Now this is the table of producer equilibrium or when price is constant and how we can get profit by using TRTC approach. One in first column here output units are given 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 and price is constant or given already like 10 rupees price is always remains same at each and every unit of output then we can write 10, 10, 10 at each unit of quantity. Total revenue is you can calculate TR by multiplying price and output. If we multiply 0 into 10, we will get 0. 1 into 10, 10. 2 into 10, 20. 3 into 10, 30. 4 into 10, 40. 5 into 10, 50. And 6 into 10, 60. So TR can be calculated by multiplying price and quantity. And TC, if TC is already given, otherwise you can calculate TC by adding total fixed cost and total variable cost. If TC is given 5, 8, 15, 21, 31, 42, 54. And you can calculate profit by taking the difference of TR and TC. So if TR deducted, if TC is deducted or subtracted from TR, then we can get profit. Profit can be denoted by pi. TR minus TC. In the beginning, when TR is 0 and TC is 5, then profit will be negative minus 5. And if TR is 10 and TC is 8, profit will be 2. If TR is 20 and TC is 15, then profit will be 5. If TR is 30 and TC is 21, profit will be 9. And when TR is 40, TC is 31, profit will be 9. When TR is 50 and TC is 42, profit will be 8. And when TR is 60 and TC is 54, then profit will be 6. Now in the beginning, profit is negative. After that, profit rises with increases in output. Producer equilibrium will always be determined on that point where TR and TC the gap between TR and TC is maximum. And here the gap between TR and TC is maximum, the unit of 9 at unit of 4 output. If producer is selling 4 unit of output, the gap between TR and TC is 9 and it is also maximum or constant. So here producer equilibrium will be determined. After that, pr profit is falling. So this third situation is not producer equilibrium situation. Equilibrium situation is always equilibrium exists at that point where the gap between TR and TC is maximum. So this is the producer equilibrium condition which we can show with the help of TRTC approach. Next is diagram. Producer equilibrium, we can show it with the help of this diagram. TR, first of all, you will draw a diagram on x-axis, write output, and on y-axis, write TR and TC. 
This TR line will always be a 45 degree line start from the origin. TR curve is always horizontal, uh, always 45 degree line or positively sloped line, upward sloping line and it will be always 45 degree line because under perfect competition market, price remains constant or uniform or identical. That's why TR will always increase by same proportion. That's why this line will be a 45 degree line. And as you know that TC is the summation of TFC and TBC. So TFC can never be zero. So TC will also can never be zero. So TC curve always start from the Y axis, not from the origin. And as you know that in the beginning, cost always falls. Then cost will become minimum. And at last, cost start rising. So from A point to B point, here cost is more than total revenue. Here profit will be negative. When cost is more and revenue is less, then firm will bear losses. And B point shows that here TR and TC are intersecting, both are equal. So no profit, no loss. In this case, profit will be zero. And at H or G point, the gap between H and G, here TR is maximum at H point and TC is minimum at G point. So the gap between TR and TC, here it is maximum. So firm will earn maximum profit at H, G gap or at H, G point. So this is the producer equilibrium condition or producer equilibrium point where producer get maximum profit at minimum cost. And when again TC cut TR curve, then it will show break even point. Here two break even points exist. One is B point and you can give another name of this where TC and TR cut intersect each other, intersect or cut in each other. Break even point is that point where firm is not earning any type of profit and not bearing losses. So where TR and TC both are equal or intersect each other, we can get break even point. But producer will always be in equilibrium situation when the gap between TR and TC is maximum. Next is this is the diagram of second approach as we have discussed with you second approach MR MC approach. I told you that where MC cuts MR from below and where MC is equals to MR from will be in equilibrium situation. Producer equilibrium can be calculated with the help of MR MC approach. Here there are two conditions one is MC or MR both should be equal at the point of equilibrium. And the second condition is MC always cuts MR from below. Then producer will earn maximum profit. So firm will be at equilibrium point where both the conditions must be fulfilled. MC should be equals to MR and MC always cuts MR from below. Here, price line is horizontal line, which is called firm's demand curve, which is always perfectly elastic or horizontal. Here, AR is equals to MR. And MC curve, as you know that MC is always U-shaped curve. Theory of cost, I have told you that MC is always U-shaped curve. AC is always U-shaped curve. The reason behind this is that cost in the beginning always falls. After that, cost will become minimum and at last, cost will start rising. Because cost is inversely related with production. When in the beginning, production increases, then cost decreases. When production become maximum, cost become minimum. When production start falling, 
then cost start rising. So MC curve or AC curve will always be a U-shaped curve and this curve shows that cost in the beginning falling after that minimum and at last cost start rising. Here two intersecting points on this diagram are A and E. A point where MC cuts MR and E point where MC also cuts MR. But equilibrium or producer will get maximum profit only at E point, not at A point. Because A point shows that MC is equals to MR, no doubt. But here MC is more than MR. And when cost is more and revenue is less, then how producer can get maximum profit? This is not a real condition of producer equilibrium. So producer always earn maximum profit when cost is minimum and revenue is maximum. This condition is satisfied at E point. Here MC is cutting MR from below. It means cost is less and revenue is more. So producer or firm will be at equilibrium point on E point. Here both the conditions of equilibrium are fulfilling. At E point, MR is equals to MC and MC is cutting MR from below. So this is the second approach of producer equilibrium. Now next is profit theory, which is very important under this market because uh, you are studying market and under market producers or sellers who are interested to earn maximum profit and how firm can get maximum profit. You must have to know what type of profit firm can earn and how we can calculate it. So profit theory explains us what is normal profit, what is abnormal profit and what is losses. These are the different concepts of profit. Normal profit is that profit when total revenue is equals to total cost. It means when TR is equals to TC that we can say that firm is earning normal profit or no profit, no loss or break even point. And second thing is the second type of profit is abnormal profit which is also known as super normal profit. If total revenue is greater than total cost, when the revenue is more than cost, then firm will make abnormal profit. And losses is the situation when total revenue is less than the total cost, then firm is making losses. So these are the very important concept, normal profit, abnormal profit and losses. I will discuss with you all these normal profit condition, abnormal profit condition, losses with the help of diagram under perfect competition market. Next normal profit you can write in this form also the minimum amount which required to keep a firm in its current line of production. So normal profit is a necessary or required condition for each and every firm because if firm is not earning normal profit then firm will bear losses or firm will shut down its business temporarily. So normal profit is the minimum amount which firm is required to keep up its current line of production. And abnormal profit or super normal profit is called when firm is earning more or above normal profit. Profit made over and above normal profit is called abnormal or super normal profit. Abnormal profit may exist in situations where firms have market power, when firms, when there are the existence of welfare losses, abnormal profit also indicate the existence of welfare losses. It means firm is charging too much price. It means welfare of the consumer decreasing, then firm can earn abnormal profit. And third is, could be taxed 
away without altering resources allocation. And abnormal profit could be taxed without altering if you are not changing your resource allocation and uh, you are getting too much profit, you are avoiding paying the taxes, then you may earn supernormal profit. These are the two concepts of profit. One is normal and other is abnormal. And all type of profit like normal profit, abnormal or supernormal profit and losses can be show with the help of diagram because diagram under this market structure is very important without drawing diagrams you can't explain or you can't understand what is the condition of abnormal or normal profit now this these are the diagrams of short run equilibrium here first here there are four types of diagram one is a diagram which is related with industry and other three diagrams are related with firm. Industry's demand curve is always downward sloping curve and supply curve is always upward sloping curve where demand and supply curve intersect each other. Equilibrium point is determined and at this equilibrium point, price is OP and quantity is OQ. And as you know that under perfect competition market, price is always determined by the industry. And that price is take over by these perfect competitive firms. So here price line is OP price and OP price is take over by firm A, firm B and firm C. All these three firms take that price which is determined by the industry's price and supply curve intersection. So AR is equals to MR in all these cases. First of all, you will draw these diagrams, same horizontal line, AR, MR equal. This is called price line or demand curve of perfect competition market in form A, form B, form C. Then the next is, next step is to draw this diagram is AC curve. First of all, you will draw AC curve. Okay, AC curve is always U-shaped curve. In the first form, form A, AC curve is below the AR MR line. In the first case, AC curve is below AR MR line. In second diagram, from B to case mein, AC curve is tangent or touching to AR MR line. And in third case, in case of form C, AC curve is U shaped and it is above the AR MR line. Yet these three lines, these three curves, AC curve, shape, define when firm will earn abnormal profit, when firm will earn normal profit, and when firm will bear losses. So you must have to remember that AC curve slope determines the condition of abnormal profit, normal profit, and losses. So first of all, in case of form A, you will draw AC curve from the below of AR MR line. And as you know that MC always cuts AC at its lowest point. So MC cuts AC at its lowest point and the equilibrium condition of the producer is where MC cuts MR, that point is called equilibrium point. So here E point is equilibrium point and if we join this line to output line or x-axis, then we can get OQ output. And now this OQ output and EQ price, this EQ price line intersect AC curve at A point. Then you can draw another line which is called here the price will fall from OP to OC or PC. The shaded area under this curve is showing that here average revenue is greater than average cost. When average revenue is greater than average cost, then it will show abnormal profit. It means in case of firm A, firm is earning abnormal or supernormal profit because average revenue is greater than average cost. In the second case, like from B, here AC is tangent to AR MR line 
and MC cuts AC at its lowest point. E point is equilibrium point where MC cuts MR. And at this equilibrium point, we can determine the quantity of output. OQ is the quantity of output. Here, there is no gap between AR and AC. When there is no gap between AR and AC or AR is equals to AC, then firm will earn only normal profit. It means no profit, no loss. And in the third case, like third firm C case, here AC is above the AR MR line. And MC always cuts AC at its lowest point. At A point, AC and MC both are intersecting. But E point is the equilibrium point where MC cuts MR from below. And quantity is OQ. Here, if we join this E line to AC curve, like A point, then we can get new price line PC, which is above the AR MR curve. Here, this dotted area or shaded area is showing that cost is greater than revenue because cost is above that cost is above than AR curve. So when cost is more than revenue, then firm will bear losses. So these are the three diagrams which is necessary while showing short run equilibrium or condition of abnormal profit, normal profit or losses under this market. Next is, you can show with the help of this type of diagram also, industries diagram and firms diagram. If you want to show uh, three types of diagram under industry case and in case of firms, then you can use this type of diagram. Industry In case of industries diagram, we will use demand and supply curve. And in case of firms diagram, we will use ARMR horizontal line or ACMC curve. When AC or AR is equals, then firm will earn normal profit. When AC is greater than AR, then firm will bear losses. When AC is less than AR or AR is greater than AC, then firm will earn maximum or abnormal profit. But the industries diagram will be show with the help of demand and supply curve intersection. In the first case, here demand curve is downward, supply curve is upward. If new firms enter in the market, supply will rise, supply will rise and firm will be a, a firm will earn abnormal profit. In when firm will earn abnormal profit, then some firms enter into the market and the profit of the firms will fall and they will get on the position of normal profit and in case if firm if all firms enter into the market then supply will increase and price will fall then firm will bear losses then firm may exit from the market it means while earning profit firm will enter into the market and when firm will bear losses firm may exit from the market next is shutdown point Shutdown point is that point where firm is temporarily close its business. When average variable cost is, when firm is not recovering its variable cost, then firm will temporarily shut down its business. Shutdown situation always exists only in short period, not in long period. When variable cost is too much or more than the average cost or average revenue, then firm will close its business. When the market price is less than the average variable cost, the firm will temporarily shut down and produce zero quantity of output. And shutdown condition is can be shown with the help of AR or ABC where the average revenue is equals to average variable cost and when the price price is AR, the price corresponding to the minimum of the AABC is called shutdown price. We can show with the help of this diagram here AR MR line is horizontal line, average variable cost is higher than the AR curve and marginal cost always cuts AC or ABC at its lowest point.
Next is long run equilibrium. Long run is that time period where all the factors of productions are perfectly mobile or you can easily change all the factors of production. In long run, as you know that the feature of perfect competition market is free entry and exit. So due to the applicability of this feature, free entry and exit, firm will always earn normal profit in long run. Because in short run, when firm earn abnormal profit, other firms will attract from this profit and they will enter into the market and uh, their profit will fall and uh, goes down to again reach at normal profit situation. When firm will bear losses, then some firm exit from the market, then again they will reach at the same situation, normal profit. So in long run, due to the applicability of freedom of entry and exit, due to this main feature, a uh, perfect competitive firm always earn normal profit where average revenue and average cost both are equal. So ARMR line is always horizontal line. LAC curve is long run average cost curve, which is also U-shaped curve. LAC curve is always U-shaped curve, which always cuts a single point, where MC cuts MR point is determined, and here MC is equals to LC. So this is a normal profit situation under long run of the competition market. We can show this diagram in this form also. Industries demand curve and supply curve always downward demand curve supply curve upward where both are uh, price is determined, price is over by these firms. The LCC shows short run average cost curve, LSC shows long run average cost curve, SMC shows short run marginal cost, LMC shows long run marginal cost curve, and here there is no difference between AC and MC, LAC and LMC. So firm is earning normal profit in long run. Now next concept is concept of supply curve. The concept of supply curve always exists only in perfect competition market. Perfect competitive, perfect competition market, the supply curve is said to be the part of marginal cost curve which lies above the equilibrium point. So the part of MC curve which lies above the equilibrium point is always called supply curve of perfect competition market. This can be shown with the help of this diagram, short run supply curve of a firm and an industry. The supply curve as you are watching here that supply curve, SMC curve is always as you know that AR MR curve is horizontal line, we can show all AR1 is equals to MR1, AR2 is equals to MR2. All these horizontal line showing that average revenue curve is always equals to marginal revenue curve and it's a horizontal line parallel to the x-axis. AC curve is average cost curve, ABC is average variable cost curve, where average variable cost curve is touching to AR curve, shutdown point exists, where AC is equals to uh, AR, then normal profit is uh, gaining by the firm, when AC is above the AR, then firm will bear losses and MC always cuts ABC and AC at its lowest point. The dotted area of SMC curve is showing that firm is earning only normal profit and SMC, the part of MC curve which lies above the equilibrium point is called supply curve of a firm. And the industry supply curve is always upward sloping line because supply curve is generally shows positive relationship between price and supply. So supply curve is always the part of long run supply curve is also same as short run supply curve. The difference is this, that AR MR line is horizontal, LS is long run average cost curve, LNC is long run marginal cost curve. The area of MC curve which lies above the equilibrium point is called supply curve of perfect competition firm. And the industries in long run, industry may be constant cost industry, in, industry may be increasing cost industry, and industry may be diminishing cost industry. If there is a constant cost industry, then the long run supply curve will be a horizontal line. If there is an increasing cost industry, the long run supply curve will be a upward sloping line. And in case of a diminishing cost industry, the long run supply curve will be a downward sloping line. We can show with the help of these demand curve and supply curve, 
if there is simultaneous change in demand and supply, demand and supply both increases by same ratio, then long run supply curve will, curve, curve will be a horizontal line. If demand increases more than the supply, then long run supply curve will be a upward sloping line which shows increasing cost industry. And in case of decreasing cost industry, here the change in supply is more than the change in demand. In this case, diminishing cost industries curve will be a downward sloping line. So this is the topic of uh, perfect competition. Thank you.